I did a video a little while ago about who's who in the television writer's room. And I got some questions about how do you even present an original property so that you could end up getting your own writer's room. This bears going over just a little bit deeper. So first, let's review a little bit. Let's list again who is in the writer's room. Generally, the showrunner would be the executive producer. You could have several executive producers, though. You could even have a non-writing uh, executive producer in the room. Then there would be an assortment of other producers. Now, all of these titles, by the way, you will uh, likely see, you'll notice when you're looking at opening credits and or end credits, sometimes now they put them um, on either side, you might notice that there are a lot of producers and some of them are not going to be writer's room producers. You may have an array of people who have titles like producer, co-producer, et cetera, who never really are in the writer's room, but they have that credit for various reasons. Now that's a lot of names on board and it's a lot of people in a writer's room. Every show is going to be different though. Some shows you will have a very small writer's room. It really depends on the show. Other shows you'll have a very large one. Comedy shows generally have very large writer's rooms and series that tend to have arcs, story arcs that continue from episode one through the season. Those may have a different format for the writer's room because the stories and the show itself dictate the needs within the writing. All right, so we went over this in another video and I will put the link down below so that you can review that if you'd like to. And now let's take a look though at how the whole structure of the, the particular series be put together so that you might be able to see a little better how there are different entry points and who it is that you might need to be contacting first and second and prioritizing your efforts if you are trying to have a series get off the ground, an original series of your own, that hopefully you'll have your own writer's room. I'm going to use the example of Ted Lasso. Now in a series like Ted Lasso, it is not too dissimilar to, from a lot of series of its type, where it started with some very talented people who were already known in their own right, such as Jason Sudeikis. And then you partner up with different entities that got that series off the ground. So, so when using the example of Ted Lasso, it's to take a look at how most series are organized and how the business structure works so that you can have a better understanding of how you might go about creating your own series. So in Ted Lasso, just like almost any other series, uh, you can look at it as the asset. And again, keep in mind, this is all in a business model sense. That's the product that gets to the all important audience. And the audience is all important because the audience, which is you and me, is what provides the money part of it. We pay our subscription to Apple TV. That's how Ted Lasso gets made. And bringing up Apple, that would be our network. Now, the network is the entity that distributes the asset. So the network gets the asset, Ted Lasso in this case, out to the audience. So behind though the entity of the network is the studio. And the studio is the part of it which most of the time you see in the credits, but you may, it may not be as prominent to the average person because it's really the network, it, which is what I'm gonna call front facing versus the studio, which is a little bit more behind the scenes facing, or they're the ones that are actively involved in getting the actual series made. In the case of Ted Lasso, there were two different parts to that. There was a reason for that for the most part though, because you had different entities come into play that made up the whole picture. The, the series started when you had the entity of Jason Sudeikis teaming up with Bill Lawrence. There are many other players involved in this, by the way. I'm just simplifying it for purposes of being able to outline it on the whiteboard here. So it was Bill Lawrence, who was the executive producer showrunner who had a deal with Warner Media. And that's why you have Warner Media here. 
So between the fact that these two powerhouses had deals with these studios, that's why they were both involved in the making of Ted Lasso. They could be looked at as both on the level of the showrunner, and they both had production companies. Bill's production company is called Doozer, and Jason Sudeikis's is Ruby Tuna. And I'm actually going to draw a connection box. So it's to find that they come together. Now the picture of how the whole enterprise works comes better together. So if you have these two entities here as your co-producers or production companies, and then you have this entity here as your studio, this entity here as the network, as we already said, this becomes your asset, as we've said, and then this becomes the money part of that asset, which fuels all of the different parts going from there. And so you could say that these two entities here between Doozer Productions and Ruby Tuna would be the showrunner component. And when you, if ever you take one of my classes, I often use the imagery of the three ring circus to visually show the showrunner's job is otherwise thought of as the factory of actually making the series. And this would be the pre-production, production, post-production, post three ring circus that makes the whole operation happen. Within that context then, the writer's room is under pre-production, but it also is going on during production. Production is lights, camera, action. Post-production is editorial, sound, music, color, mix, and other assorted details. Writer's room could be staffing, pre-production could be staffing, locations, casting. And within the left side of the board then, the writer's room fits into the context right here on the lower left circle is the context for the writer's room that is on the left side of the board so uh this should show the operation of the whole juggernaut business part of it all where you have the writer's room be one small component really where that component is under the pre-production and production but you know really I just put it there because the writing starts before everything else and that would be in the one circle of the three ring circle that the showrunner is presiding over and in charge of so there you have it just to give you some context if you are a writer creator who wants to get a show off the ground and wants this whole machine to be what you create then the different parts of how you can enter into that schematic and make those deals happen one of the best ways to understand that is to study up on pre-existing or already existing series get a sense of who all of these major partners are who is partnered with who to do what look back into the history as best as you can do some research and when you can figure out and track the steps of all the different parts of the creation of a series this is a way to to see and visualize your own possible roadmap forward for your own original series. So keep writing, keep creating. I'll see you in the next video.